Mad. I'll, put, I'll, I'll clip this up in the beginning. Hello, Mad. <laughs> <laughs> She'll love that. She loves it whenever we talk about her. <laughs> it's like, it's like I'm part of the gang. And I'll put it right at the end. What's your mum's name, Amber? Wendy. Wendy. Wendy, if you've made it to the end of the video, hello. <laughs> <laughs> Two hours later, are you still here? Hello. <laughs> Two hours. She, she will see it for sure. Oh, brilliant. Anyway, guys, hello. 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 That's not the official bonjour. That's not the bonjour. Oh, okay. No, it's not the official. the official. Hello, Wendy's in the room, and I don't know who else is in <laughs> <laughs> right, we bought jewelry then. Yeah. <laughs> are, we bon are we bon jewelry then? <laughs> <laughs> Bonjour, everyone. Bonjour. Bonjour. Oh, it's been it's been too long, gang. Me miss yes. you a long time. <laughs> 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 nice office reference yeah oh. Oh. thank you for that yeah and we are all we, well we are all finally well amber yes finally Over no more strep throat yes we and there is no i will research the equivalent the uk or stroke european equivalent of strep throat there must be an answer to that I've never it's something it. viral encephalitis is that what it's called I don't know. I've just never met anyone in England that has said, oh, I've got strep throat. It's like, there, there must be another word yeah. for the same thing. Like, you don't meet yeah. anyone and it goes, oh, my God, I've got strep throat. <laughs> Do you know someone in America who's just told you the name? It sounds good. Something new to put on the sick form. <laughs> for work. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Anyway. Even if you had strep throat, that couldn't save you from an alien invasion. Nope. Definitely not. As a matter of fact, the invasion happened because of the strep throat. I've just had to Google it. I've just had to Google it. What do English people call strep throat? They call it a sore throat. <laughs> For real? <laughs> That's so not true. It's, uh... In America, you won't buy you. <laughs> in England, we just got our <laughs> This says sore throat in bracket, strep throat, or tonsillitis. That's it. That's what it says. Yeah. A bit more gin. Whether that's right. Another Pop beer. some gin. <laughs> Salty. That's nah, more than just normal sore throat for sure. Because the really, maybe for some people, it's harder to fight off. But like when I need, when I get it, I need antibiotics. Like I will just, it'll just go straight down into my my bladder and stuff if i don't could be weather related because we have such shit weather you you, you know it, <laughs> it doesn't like england it doesn't weather. It doesn't <laughs> well, just just like war of the worlds do you that's think what i was thinking yeah we should pass that on to the santi when they arrive yeah the, the aliens <laughs> won't come to england they'll just go everywhere else <laughs> give them strep throat i like that idea <laughs> They died of sore throats, <laughs> of British sore throats. It's, it's like the, like the Martian <laughs> War of the Worlds. They died of a cold. Yeah. Yeah. It's not your nose. So. I've always thought that was brilliant. I've, I've never, you know, everybody who thought that was a stupid idea, I was like, what are you talking about? It's a great idea that it just, you, the, the germs attacked their immune systems that weren't used to it. Like, what, we, what uh, still wear a helmet? We, we took disease. Did we not take disease <laughs> to Native Americans? We took disease to Eskimos. I don't know. So why not take disease to the aliens? I mean, come on. Yeah. Just give them human diseases. Wipe the lot out. Wipe out the galaxy. We could do. We could just. Go beyond the stars. I wonder if they're going to address that in three body. Like, if they're going to try to think about, like, how could we do that? Or are they just under the assumption that the aliens that are coming are so far beyond us that the worry of, of disease is not even an issue to them? I'm, I'm waiting. Who, who else is waiting to see what the, the, the little chink in their armor is? Yeah. Yeah. I can't wait. But, I mean, I don't know. Do, I mean, I've not, I've not read the books, and I've not seen the Japanese no, version. No. Do they actually get to the point in the story where the aliens are here? The, the there's a trilogy, and from what I've heard, is that it covers the whole four hundred years. Right. 
Okay. So they eventually do get right. here. Um, okay. Or, yeah. I love that. That'd be interesting to see. Yeah. Well, and I'm it's a finished familiar. story. So we'll get right. to the end. If they if they get this renewed, we'll see an ending, which is nice. I, I must admit. I'll be honest with you. I can't I, see I them very, not getting that renewed. No, I yeah. was very apprehensive when I first heard 400 years. Because yeah. straight away, I was like, that takes the urgency out of the story. Like you can chill, you know, for a little bit and then try and come up with a solution. But the way episode five went, that's as far as I got, I'm 100% in now. That was awesome. Episode yeah. five really kicked it off for me. I, I was, I've, I've got to admit, I was in from episode one. It was everything. Mm -hmm. There's nothing, there was nothing in that show that I wasn't in, up for. Like proper, proper sci fi, but with that scientific end edge to it yep but not too much pseudo science they, they didn't bog us down in it mm. but just just rolled just rolled it out and a oh, what's a name from um ambulance is nice to look at as well just as an aside uh I, you know you don't <laughs> he's on the eye you don't get fed up watching her every every episode um i'm sure there's something for the girls as well but Anyway, that's just from my point of view. No, I was in straight away as well. I was in straight away, all eight yeah. episodes done in two days. And mm. I don't know which one of you in our little chats backs and forwards said, might be might have been you, Taters, that said maybe episodes three and four would look lulling a bit, like a bit. It, 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 it took it, it I want to say it slowed down. It, did, it slowed down a tiny little bit. It wasn't anything... You know, that's an exaggerated comment. It wasn't anything yeah. too slow. It wasn't enough for you to go, like you uh, suffered with um, uh, Airbender, where you said the, those couple of episodes brought you down. No, shush. I don't know what you're thinking. Um, we don't go there this early. But, yeah. <laughs> where you said it really brought you down. It didn't bring me down. It just slowed a little bit, and then it picked straight back up again. Yeah, I was um, just intrigued. I've got, to, I've got to say, yeah. every single episode, I was just in, and I, I kind of also steadily, it wasn't anything I wanted to binge. That doesn't make it a bad a bad thing necessarily. But where they're an hour long, and I just wanted to, because sometimes, it, I don't know, maybe I was overthinking it a bit too much, because it does get a little bit, it's, well, it's existential, isn't it? The whole, mm -hmm. the whole premise of it. And that, that can get a bit, um, if you let it, that could get a little bit, depressing to be fair but the whole concept is kind of horror cosmic horror right so I, I kind of i don't know i spent about a week getting through it Pro yeah probably about a week from when it's when was it released last wednesday was it last thursday it was the 20 was it the 21st yeah i can't remember yeah yeah so i probably spent a week just plodding through it but it doesn't mean that's a bad thing but I don't know if you could binge it. Like, who would binge? I did. I did. <laughs> I've, I've done five episodes today, and that I literally so... done. I, I done one, two, and three. I tried to do number five, but unfortunately, it was super late in or early in the morning. I ended up falling asleep. Woke up and put it straight back on again, and went through five, six, seven, and eight. But really good. I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I've got to say, mm. it's nothing. I can't. So, can any of us spot or? Is is there a downside to any of it? For many of us, for me, I'm not saying it's perfect, but for me, that was spot on. Eight episodes of sci-fi for the modern era, adapted a book. I don't, I haven't read it, so I can't speak for that aspect of it. But I think they nailed it all. Mm. So I they've, think... from what I hear, they've taken a lot of liberties. Um, I know that, like the MC is a man, not. The woman so they've done, done some gender swapping and um also the thing that i've heard because i haven't read it but i want to i really want to I've, it's been on my list forever because i know it's been so big um but the uh the books are very less very much less character driven it's more conceptual driven oh, so the netflix adaptation decided to ramp up the personal drama and the emotion and I think that was a great choice because then we're on the journey emotionally. Like I, I could, yeah, it really worked. Like I was really invested in, well, I don't want to spoil anything for Liz, but what happens for 
the one character that's part of yeah. Operation Staircase, like that to me was, I was so invested in that emotionally, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And he got, he got to a point where he, well, I've got, a, yeah. Where go he, for it. Just go for it. Where, well, the, the, the guy who's dying of cancer, I was thinking, <laughs> what's, what's the point of this? You know, I, I knew there would be a reason for it. There's no need to just have a character die. Whatever episode he was going to die mm -hmm. of his affliction, there had to be a reason for it. And there was a pretty good reason. Yeah. It... Mm. I've got to admit. That's good to know. Way, anyone who says, you know, when there's like a twist to a story that someone says, oh, I saw that coming a mile away. Oh, oh I could yeah, tell no. that. First minute he said he had cancer. I, I knew, I knew where that was going to go. No, you didn't know where this was going. <laughs> where, where they went with that, and, and Liz, you will, you will enjoy. It. I just thought, oh yes, <laughs> oh yes. Think, <laughs> I think for me, watching it all in one go, I think the intrigue is what carried me through. But I must say, uh, as a little, very minute nitpick, the pacing was a little bit off for me personally, especially right. in episode four, but then they rebounded massively with episode five with that boat and when the old uh, Liam Cunningham, the you know, Game of Thrones dude puts the visor on and they talk to the AI thing and the protons go around the world and all that sort of stuff. That was awesome. Yeah. It up massively. That science, that science side of it, I absolutely loved that. I, yeah. I, I thought that was fantastic. And there's been so many actually got to see it yeah and there's been so many little in really exciting and interesting uh sci-fi elements that we've seen mm. in this show that i don't think i've seen anywhere else before and they're playing major parts in this story which is interesting like like the sofons soft sofans isn't that yeah. what they're called Those yeah, 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 yeah. Mm. And I so i'm mm. guessing if it spans 400 years mm. I'm guessing potentially we're going to get a different cast every season. I have no jumps, clue if it jumps through the story because then it'll be the next generation taking it on. Then the well, there may be some recurring. I mean, there may be yeah, some. Yeah, there's going to be yeah. at least okay. one. At least one. Okay. <laughs> Possibly two. Liz will realize, Liz will realize cool. there might be some recurring characters after yeah. watching cool. the episodes. Yeah, no, that'd be cool. See, doing that as well, it changes it up. You know, yeah. as it's almost like the the countdown has begun. So as you move through the seasons, it's going to ramp up and up and up. And I can see that already. So I'm quite excited by that. Yeah. And it, it, embrace, it embraces the, uh, the, bit, the bit I like. I, I, know, I know I've mentioned this before about films and, and TV and comics and books and all the stuff we discuss. But when the creators embrace the, the, the madness mm. of, what they're, of the story they're telling, so this is hardcore sci-fi, really. Yeah. And I, and I like the fact that they've gone for the human element. They've concentrated on what is it, five the five guys and girls from Yeah, the five. It, that is a it's a, such an elegant way of taking us through. It's beyond epic. The story is beyond epic. Yeah. It's well, I don't know what you want to call it, but so to just narrow it down to these five characters and 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 go there where they're going. I love. I just love it. They're embracing them, and especially on Liz, the 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 last couple of episodes and where they go and how they get yeah. to it. And, and Wade, like the, the lead guy. Yeah, and, love that guy. What he's gonna do and what they're doing, and and I just go and I'm I'm just sitting there thinking, yes, it was that good. Yeah. Yes. I mean, the only bit that made me sort of like go, oh, I'm not sure. I think I said it on the group. The bit, the bit when you first the boat is coming down the channel, yeah, and they bring the nano fibers up, yeah. But you yeah. see the kids playing in the playground, yeah. That that was my first sort of like, oh shit, we're no, they're not going to go that far, surely. Well, we're not well, when see you, that, well, when you surely. first saw that bit and it was everyone was getting cut about the waist level straight away, I was thinking, why don't you just duck and like lay down. But then I saw the rest of it and I realized, yeah, okay, that wouldn't have worked. <laughs> that wouldn't yeah. have worked. That's all. They fought. Um, yeah, they fought. But, they did, they, but, did yeah. cock up, they did cock up once, though. There was one cock up in, in that. So in the next episode, they start off with the boat on the beach, didn't it? The little fires and the boats all sliced up. But they got some upright girders that are still standing. 
Ah. And it's like, oh, you fucked they up. They weren't the ones they brought in. But they've been horizontal girders at one point that now have been it pulled up. It doesn't look like it. It looks okay. like the sides <laughs> of the shit. Uh. That's the bit. That's the problem. I mean, I may be wrong, but again, it, the You don't want to forget where you put that nanowire, do you? Sliced, <laughs> and there's a girder standing up like that. And it's like, no, that shouldn't be there, surely. It hasn't got lights on it, though, is it? They haven't brought that in. No, 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 no. No, it's part of the ship. To get a so, it, it, you might be right, Amber. It might have been a, a horizontal. Horizontal that's there. now. Know, but it doesn't so like when you get to a, a point where the rest of the show is so good and you're so invested, do you give a shit about little fucks up? I mean, no, screw ups like that? Like no, that. you don't. Like I and I was like, ah, never mind. Yeah. If you're exactly. Yeah, if yeah, you're there's got to be things like that, then you're not really in it. Yeah, I mean, no, the, so the, the first that thing. Last I, time, but I am. The, I am. To be fair, that nano is the only thing still. that didn't take me out of it, but it made me it made me just think of all the different scenarios of losing that nano wire and what that could actually do. Like how annoying that would be to try and find it and any mess ups with it. I was just thinking <laughs> of all the different no things fingers. you could do. Yeah. I think I put it there. Oh shit. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, where did I put that nano wire? Ow. <laughs> <laughs> just walk straight into it and you're in half all of a sudden. But yeah. I reckon but no, other contract that. with Gillette. If, <laughs> but if, if anything, I I think they showed, you know, if we're going to, and it's not nitpicking, but mm. just generally talking about that, and it was quite a visceral five minutes of mm. uh, yeah. payment. <laughs> But it would have been far worse if they didn't show as much because we yeah. knew what that nano wire could do. Yeah, yeah. I reckon the guy on deck, mm. he, when he's got the base, he's like doing mopping the deck and he's looking at the posts going like that and he's going, oh, "What's going on?" And then his legs go in the air. Yeah, I reckon from there, the kids running away, uh, the the other bloke running away with his little with the little thing that he's trying to save. Show all that, and I think sound effects could have done a lot. I think we could have imagined a lot worse than what they yeah. showed. I mean, what they yeah. showed was good, don't get me yeah. wrong. It was horrific. But... Sort of like seeing the, the the paper on the wall. Remember when yeah. it was like the kids the kids cutouts that were on the wall, and they get sliced, and then just see the reaction of the guy watching the woman and hearing it? I think, yeah, that could have been really effective. But at the same time, like, it's a nitpick. Like, was and it bad? Yeah. And in yeah. silence as well. That would have made that the horror of that mm. scene. Don't don't give me the metal getting cut and all that. Nothing. But just as if they're seeing it from see on board the ship's CCTV. They they uh, hacked into the CCTV on board the ship, and you can see all the events, but no, but in silence. Mm. Yeah. Especially um, old saucy chops, whose invention it is. Like yeah. Uh, like realizing what, what, saucy what, chops. <laughs> Oggy, that was her name, wasn't it? Oggy, 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 Oggy yeah, yeah. Oggy. 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 See, as, as well, I really liked the um, the game element to it when they first found the headsets. Mm -hmm. I liked. I, I thought I thought that was really quirky. I was not expecting that at all. Oh. Like that that alternate alternate reality sort of virtual AI stuff. I thought that was really cool. And the guys and and, and the actual missions they had to do in that as well. Yeah. When, when he first puts it on, what was his name in Game of Thrones? A bloke with a beard. Oh, I can't remember. Uh, that, was it... uh, oh, oh. There's, there's quite a few Game of Thrones people in it. So you've got Samwell? Was Samuel it Samwell? Samuel Tardy. Samuel yeah. Tardy. Yeah. No, no... <laughs> no relation to Samwise Gamgee. <laughs> yeah. right. oh, I'm a friend of cheaters. <laughs> <laughs> But when, when she goes, like, he puts it on and straight away, you're not invited. Wallop, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, like, I like there was some humorous moments in it as well, because when he get when he goes in there again, just takes the, 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 the headset off straight away, and it's like, yeah, it happened again. Yeah, like, there was some nice humorous yeah, bits in oh, it as well, wasn't yeah. there? It was good. Yeah. And that's throughout the whole series, despite the horror and things that we're getting. Like, even in the last episode, there's some there's just moments of humor. Yeah, definitely. Good. Especially scenes no. between Sol and um, what's his face who's dying. Mm. Uh, it's, it's really, really sweet. Like, really yeah. Sweet, but uh, without being over the top, I think they really, really nailed it. There's, there's no moment where you think, oh, come on, get on with it, or 
<laughs> and, and has it definitely been picked <laughs> up for season two? I think anyway. I didn't hear anything about that. We, we it's too early. Yet. We don't know yet. If it, I I can't see it not coming to conclusion. I really can't. Okay. I, so they gave a, Avatar like two or three weeks before they greenlit yeah. season two and three. So I'm guessing with this, they want to really see how it goes. Because this is going to be a word of mouth thing. There's not already a huge fan base for a visual media of three body problem there's the readership and then there's people who liked the trailer you know so they got to wait for word to spread yeah that's interesting i'm I, I just, I just wondering did it would it be sat say for example it never got picked up for season two would this season still be satisfying on it as a standalone oh uh, well now, you know now what i, I know there is a, a, right obviously from amber telling us the story prior no so I want a, more. A question. I want the lot. So no, it is very, very unsafe. In that es aspect, that that is my one main thing. If I did want to go in on it, is that it's yet again another film or TV series that doesn't give us a beginning, middle, end. It kind of does because they concentrated on the five characters. We've seen their their story. Kind of it. The middle end and they but I think we spoke about it before. As a beginning, middle end, this is the beginning. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The middle is yet to come and the end is the third season. Because yeah, the the thing is, you know that there is a there's a pre-existing beginning, middle, and end that is already mm -hmm. successful in its own medium. Yeah. So this is a very successful book. I think it got a Hugo Award. Um wow. the it's the trilogy is done, it has it's a Hugo. a complete. <laughs> um, I think it's like a it's a big sci-fi award. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. it, it's basically like an Academy Award for books, except science fiction. Like you better be pretty dang good. In yeah. on Earth, Liz, we have books. <laughs> oh, okay. We, 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 just have, <laughs> we just have like holograms and stuff. It's all good. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Santi, don't forget Amber Taters. Don't forget he's nearer to the Santi than we are. So I you. know. No. Could be a collaborator. Yeah. No, we don't get on. <laughs> <laughs> you fell out. You fell out three million years ago. Three million. Yeah. Years. <laughs> Round about then. Yeah. You know what was one of the things that struck me as I I didn't expect this question to come out, but it made me go, oh, I don't, I don't, yeah, you don't know, and there's still a threat. He's like, we don't know how big these ships are that are approaching. Are they the size of thimbles? And I'm going, they could be, but like, but they would still be a threat, you know? They did that in Men in Black, didn't they? Where it was just like, oh, we've got this big armada and the ship's about that big. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I'm I'm excited to see how things pan out. And there's so many questions. So, like what you were saying, Hog, yeah, I get it. You're left with questions going, I don't know. But my hope is that there can be some research done into the reception of the books and they can say, okay, how did book two do? How did book three do? Were they considered more successful than book one? Like, you know, when did this, sh this series take off? Cause I think it wasn't until the third book. I, I don't know. I, I would have to double check, but I think it wasn't until the third book that these, this trilogy really, really uh, took off. And I wonder like, as well, did, did, did this show cover the entire first book? Or, I have been told it covered the first book plus some of book two. Okay, because I was about to say, because maybe, you know, there's always that fear, isn't there, that they're going to try and drag it out for more than, like, instead of just doing one season a book, they might try and do five seasons, you know, split it up a little bit more just to try and drag it out. I was just wondering if this first series covered it. So if it did, great. And then actually it keeps it quite nice and, and, and compact, having mm -hmm. three seasons, three books, three seasons, done. That'd be that'd be quite nice. I have heard they're gonna because they've done Game of Thrones previously. They're gonna do seven series, and <laughs> they're, they're gonna build up to a, the the pinnacle of the series of the. Seven. And then do a and then do a shit season eight. <laughs> yeah, you know, that's uh. You brought something up though. These are the same producers who did Game of Thrones. Yeah, and I think this proves, at least in my book, it proves that they are very good at adapting. Yeah. Mm. They may not be good at coming up with their own stuff, but they're doing a pretty good job with adapting. I don't know who they got for the scriptwriter, how involved they were in 
Three Bodies ad adaptation because I know that there's been a lot of liberties taken. I watched the first episode of the Chinese version, which is basically like a chapter by chapter, like exact adaptation from what I've heard. Um, and it's very different already. So uh, I'm just very curious to see or to know behind the scenes, how much involvement did they have in the writing of this adaptation? You know? Hmm. Yeah, that, that's interesting because whilst those two guys, was it Benny, Benioff, is it? Benioff and... That's the only my, name I remember. Yeah. <laughs> and his mate. Yeah. David I mean, Wise and... Doing all right. Benny, Daniel right. Benioff or something? That's it, yeah. Dan, Daniel Benenfield, isn't it? Then you bet. If you're not the one, then what? Karaoke version tonight. Look, that's it. on, Roy. <laughs> but they was good at doing Game of Thrones, uh, adapting Game of Thrones until mm -hmm. those last what was it, two or three series, where the they had to start doing their own stuff. He hadn't written the book yet, and they went, oh, we know. We know what to do here. And that's when it went, <laughs> So if they're just adapting the three books for three series, spot on. I was, that, I was talking about adaptions. I'm only going to talk about it very quick. Sometimes, and I, Roy knows why I'm doing I'm talking about this, is sometimes... Who? Who? Oh, Who? sorry. Who? Oh. <laughs> <It's> no one. <laughs> um, Sometimes I've found with so I've been reading the Walking Dead comics oh, and fair. comparing it to the show. Phil, right? If you heard this one, before, <laughs> right? But, so me, me, but me and they, Phil going to go for shit. They have purposely changed Who's stuff Phil? for such a good reason. Like they purposely change stuff. So when you if you watch the show first, you're going to get a surprise with the comics. If you read the comics first, you're going to get a surprise with the show, and each are equally satisfying. Yeah, and I think sometimes it is good to take liberties like they like you say with the free body problem to take some liberties with stuff and change things so you know potentially i don't know if they would do it but maybe kill off a character that survives in the book so that way if you've read the books of free body problem you're gonna have a surprise when you see the show but then if you see the show and decide i'm gonna go to the books you'll equally get a surprise and something slightly different so i think it can I, work both yeah. ways i think as long as you're not destroying the 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 main plot or important mm -hmm. elements of the main characters like so I, I like killing off a character that survives you can't kill off an, a main character who's there for a significantly further amount of time and the story revolves around that main character and have them kill off and then consider it well it's still an adaptation in my opinion mm -hmm. mm. see weirdly again walking dead did that they killed off a character quite early on that's the main character in the show They've done it totally different way around. It's really interesting how they've done it. With, with Walking Dead, they made the, they made a conscious decision to change what happened in the, the comics so that the comic fans that were coming along with them, I mean, it is a it's a very, very thin tightrope to walk yeah, there. Very thin tightrope. Like you just said, Amber, as long as you're not changing it, but they did. And for five, what was it, five, six, seven series, they swapped it all out. They yeah. swapped a lot. They swapped a lot. Who dies, who doesn't, who lives, new characters, blah, blah. And it worked. It worked. Well, you got very competent writers then. Yeah. 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 The guy who wrote the comics, he, I think he was overseeing it from day one, Kirkman. Uh, so. mm. Yeah, he was. But I was just intrigued, as, you know, sometimes with adaptions. Don't get me wrong, you get the literal adaption, but sometimes it's nice to have a bit of a change. And it sounds like the changes that they've made to free body problem, making it a bit more about the char the characters and making it more character driven, it has made it better and made it a bit different. Whereas I imagine the books were going into more detail and you're gonna get a different experience reading the books. Because yeah. it's more like like you said, it's more conceptual. So I'm guessing they'll dig into the science a bit more, I'm guessing. I don't know. I have no idea. I just heard that it's not very, it doesn't focus much on the characters in the books. It's very much just like talking about the concepts itself, like paragraphs and paragraphs of just talking about the concepts. That's it. That's mm. it. Not June 2. <laughs> not the book, the June book. Like just talking about, ooh, we're off in space. <laughs> we're off our tits on spice, man. <laughs> have you seen June 2 yet, Amber? I did. 
I finally did. I, I dragged my ass over there and <laughs> um, it was so good. I loved it. Did you guys like it? Yeah. yeah. We Absolutely. didn't get to talk about it. Oh my gosh. It, we did. You kind of switched off because you was thinking you were sulking, thinking, oh, I've got to wait. Oh, <laughs> nice. <laughs> no, I had to wait till I could go with my family. And I think you switched off. Then they, they went without me because I was sick anyway, so. Oh, really? Oh, so you waited for them. Then you got sick and they went without you. And well, you that's how it goes. <laughs> I mean, come on. You, you buy your tickets two weeks Wendy. in advance. like Wendy! Wendy! <laughs> <laughs> she didn't go see it. You've got a disgruntled... <laughs> <laughs> no it's all good though i got to go see it and oh my gosh so good i sat a little too close to the <laughs> you know oh, that meme of everybody <laughs> where it's like it's like this uh, like, <laughs> i i felt a little bit like that for about the first 20 minutes <laughs> but then i got over it <laughs> you're too close you but, know, like that didn't you it's like... <laughs> <laughs> no i'll probably go see it again um uh, but I'll sit further back. <laughs> I'd love, I'd love to do the double bill now. Mm. I'd love to see one, it. and then the next, yeah. Yeah, yeah, just back to back. Back to back. I wonder if they'll do that. I mean, they, they've it's been a hit in the theaters here. Like, that they're still full. Like, you still have to buy your tickets two weeks in advance. Oh wow! wow. Yeah, at That's least at the thing. IMAX. Probably not at the normal theater, but at the IMAX, what? which. For all intents and purposes, it's it's a hit. I mean, I haven't heard that. You know, I, I think something like that, a bit like a film like Oppenheimer. I think these films are they're, they're a bit old school, maybe, where they're looking at the long game. They're looking at the first the first film probably took a year to get its money back. They're not looking at the opening weekend. Oh my God, we haven't earned our money back. Like yeah. blockbusters we've spoken about, you know, in months months gone by i think these films they you know they will get the word of mouth no one's because mm. I, I you know you you just don't hear june 2 people moaning about it i i it not yeah i haven't heard anybody complaining no so you know that tells me that the word of mouth is good and then if it's still in the cinema and but that's the crucial thing the sit the, the the cinemas have got to keep it in there mm. You know, what's funny is uh, Dune 1 did not do as well in theaters, I think, as Dune 2. No, which is which kind of speaks, it, that, that says a lot, doesn't it? Because mm -hmm. a lot of people come onto it afterwards because of word of mouth, and that's kept number two in the cinema. So well, again, what, what, um, Netflix, what, was, what was coming Netflix out around Dune 1, there wasn't a lot actually coming out as well, was there? A lot of it was... No, but it was also pandemic season. Like, my right. brother and I went to see it at IMAX. We were one. Of, we were two of, like, 12 people in the whole theatre. Yeah. And, no, and we came out going, like, we should go see it again. <laughs> I think like what Hog says, I think if they did a, 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 a release of both, I reckon, yeah, they would, yeah. I reckon that's where yeah. they make their numbers up. I'd go do it for yeah. sure. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And I think as well, Netflix pulled a blinder because over here, it came June part one was uploaded to Netflix about two months before June two was released. Yeah. So I watched mm -hmm. it again on that. And yeah. So, you know, people that didn't necessarily see it in the cinema would have, you know, gone seen it on Netflix or whatever other streaming service it was on beforehand. So I think that's what's helped with the numbers after the word of mouth mm -hmm. from part one. I think, yeah, it's boosted it up massively. That's a sensible bit of marketing, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, big time. That, you know, before the, the second one comes out, you know, someone like Netflix, and then, you know, the ones that are going to click around and might not have wanted to go to see, to watch a two-and-a-half-hour sci-fi film, because the, the first one, forgive the pun, is drier. <laughs> <laughs> it is. The second, one, the second one's full on. Like, but it's still quite engaging even even for a streamed show i think a lot of people like i showed it to my friend who i know he never would go and see dune like it wouldn't intrigue him it wouldn't be his kind of story but i was like you didn't he's like i didn't even hear about this movie and then i i made him sit down and watch it and he's like i can't believe i've never heard of this movie i can't believe i've never seen it you know like he was so in it he was so and it's definitely not his kind of movie it's just a very well made movie and it happens yeah. to be science fiction epic you know it must have been in the southern part of the desert 
of the planet Ara of Arrakis. <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> isolated. Yeah, in isolated. <laughs> you only get to where he lives by worm. There are people who aren't even interested in like big, you know, like I'm, I just feel like he's one of those folks who uh, really gets into like reality TV shows and, you know, oh, things like that. And I, I'm like, oh my gosh, you guys are missing out on some. So, like, how can you be in that? But there's a market for it. My dog is scratching at my door. Go away, dog. What's it? Go away. Is his name Dog? No, her name is Sorsha. Oh, <laughs> you call her Dog? Dog? I call, her, I call the baby Baby. I don't call her by her real name. Hey! Sorsha. Hey! Dog. Leave it. Sorsha. She's going to ruin my door. Dog. I might. <laughs> okay, now. Stop. No, don't. No, don't do that against the door. No, no. <laughs> well, she's massive. She's like a giant. She's like definitely part wolf. Uh, she's Malamute German Shepherd. Uh, and like, so, okay, I have to stop her because she's going to ruin my door. Wind it up. Arr, she can hear <laughs> she's scratching my door. <laughs> <laughs> This, this could be like the comedy bit where you just see your tail going like that. Like, <laughs> you see Amber I'm just expecting Amber not to come back. Oh, no, she's back. I was about to say, I, was about to say, I, was to I can't. She'd have to climb over wires. All, all scratched. Amber comes back. She had a top like that. All her own. <laughs> <laughs> she's, she's all right. If I will open up the door and all three of the dogs are sitting in the hallway, but mine is the one that's standing there looking over her shoulder at me like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like no. Okay, sorry about that. No, it's all right. They're all right. They're we were talking about Dune. Yes, we. Yeah. We, we well, I think we was getting well. So you you enjoyed it. It was yeah. A fulfilling experience. It will make a great yeah a great uh, double header. That yeah yeah. Are they barking now at the door? Yeah, she is. Just let her in. Just invite her on. I, she'd have to climb over my bed. I just, I don't want to scratch him. No. So much I could say right now. Yeah. <laughs> go away, dog. Go. We don't go there. Not often. <laughs> on the whole lot. Um. Okay, so on uh, uh, Instagram, at least, I've started getting involved in Instagram, I'm trying to figure it out. Uh, Benny Gesserit fashion is like a thing now. Everybody's like, it looks so cool. I don't know about you guys, but uh, I think that it might be promoing for the Benny Gesserit show that's coming out on HBO. What mm. do you think? Possibly. Yeah, most likely. Yeah. I, found out that I, reckon Hog, will be... I reckon Hog would look good in the Benny Gesserit. I mean, what, countries, are, what countries is it cool? <laughs> no, no, I just mean like doing TikToks dressing as a Benny Gesserit, like, you know? The cosplay. Yeah. Or like you look, it's not even cosplay. It's like people are just finding random stuff in their house that works as like, you know, they'll take like a necklace and put it over their face and like a towel, like Benny Jesser. <laughs> um, but uh, I, I've been pointing out that a lot of fashion shows are doing it too. So I wonder if the first, uh, first Dune kind of inspired that. Mm. I don't know. Just thought I'd throw that in there. The reason not to go on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It's you know what he's created something that mm. that there there's gonna be a a lot of people I think sucked into the Dune universe at this point. Um, yeah. It'll be I, hopefully it doesn't sink like we've seen some other franchises do. After seeing June two, because last time we had this conversation, obviously you haven't seen it yet. But after seeing June two, would you want to see another one with Villeneuve? Another Villeneuve. Yeah, another June movie. June I four. I would trust him to make it interesting and engaging. I mean, Dune one is is rather dry for science. Even mm. in science fiction, it's considered dry. Um, mm. so they he juiced it up. Yeah, he no, he June. gave it a, he gave it some spice, right? <laughs> yeah, the beginning of the June Very nice. Like what you've done there, Amber. <laughs> love it. And you didn't, as you said that, you didn't even meet. You didn't even know you was going to say that, did you? I didn't. He spiced it. I love it. I might, I might edit that bit out, and I'm going to say it. He's certainly spiced it up. So get yeah. <laughs> well done. So clever. 
the Dune universe. What's that? Dune universe. Dune universe. Dune universe. Dune oh, universe? Like franchise now. Oh, I like that Dune universe. Yeah. Get on that shirt. but oh no please god no please just even if he stopped now even if Villeneuve and they looked at how much they earned out of the first two films what's going on Amber are you getting violent with the the animals she's getting very annoyed she's barking at me on like incessantly on, on I'm starting to think Timmy fell down the well and I should go investigate. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh no, she's pick up, picked up the box and she's chewing it. And like, thanks. She's seen animal animal cruelty on screen yeah. on my channel now. Like, it's, I'm gonna get banned. You just threw something. <laughs> I'm gonna get. I- I hate to do this again, but she's destroying stuff. So yeah, you, you guys keep talking. <laughs> <laughs> so now, the last, the, to be fair, the last thing I want to see is an expanded universe of these characters. You, 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 wouldn't, yeah. you wouldn't fancy seeing like a worm centric, what they do under the sand. <laughs> <laughs> now, having said that, what they're going to do with a Benny Jesuit, what is it called? The Witch? Wicked Witch? Um, uh, no, it was, um, oh, I forget now, June. I can't remember. Sisterhood or something. The what? Sisterhood. No, it's a story about the sisterhood, but it was uh, June Prophecy. Hmm. June Prophecy. I mean, well, at least that's what I saw it as, whether that actually does pan out. That just that might be a working title. We're going, we're going back to the others again, though, aren't we? Them others. Oh, yeah. You've got to grab. Long and stringy. Yeah, and they've got to... Just squeeze them fuckers so dry. Can't we just calm down? I mean, again, it's going back into the history, though, isn't it? So I think uh, Amber researched it last last time we was on screen. Um, it's going back like ten thousand years in the history of the Bene Gesserit. So, which is interesting. It's all interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, so I, I, I think Villeneuve will potentially do a third one, so that way it's his trilogy then. Right, um, as long as he's doing it, I'm, I'm, yeah. I will trust it. But I, mean, I would yeah, like exactly. to give it a bit of time, I think. I don't, because obviously, if they're doing Messiah, that would be a bit of a time jump, wouldn't it? So Paul's going to be older. Massive, massive time jump. So at least like 20 years, isn't it? Yeah. I would leave, yeah. And, and that book, like I've said before, that book does not a good film make. No. No. Which book? Uh, June Messiah. Oh, that's the third one, right? No, second one. No, the second one. That's the second one. Yeah, yeah but you, you said it before, Hog. If you was to combine the second and third books, you could end up with a, a, a relatively good movie. Yeah, or even... And, and, I mean, that's intriguing. It's really weird how he's he's done two films of the first book, which I think is needed to be... It's so dense, it's so rich. Mm. Characterizations and the well-building and everything. The, the houses of Atreides and Harkonnens and the Emperor and everything, right? He did need at least two films. Mm. Yeah. Weird. The next two books would, I think, would just about do two films. Yeah. Because that first book is so... You could really, really sum it up, that second book. And I know I've, I've banged on about it before, so I won't go on too much, but... It really does seem like the epilogue of the first story. Yeah. It seems like after, so w- where we've got up to in the second June film, the second book kind of goes, oh, right. So now he's married to Princess U- Ursula. Irulan. Princess, uh, he's, he's now married to Urulan, but he's living with old, uh, what's her face? Like, Johnny. Yeah, Johnny. He's 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 living he's living with her, but he's married to her. And old um I'm good at names, isn't I? His his mate his mate from the dead. That's off, not helping any further. He's the, the bloke from James Bond, he's off doing the jihad in <laughs> murdering like, throughout the galaxy with all his mates, with all the uh, Sam people. 
it, it was just, it's like the ending. It's like, oh, that's what they did next. And you can do that in five minutes. It could be an epilogue. Mm. It really is. That is the second book. And then the third book, which I haven't got to the end of yet. But you see what I mean, how that would make two good films, because the setup, that would be the setup. And then I don't know if it would be too much for one film. But, ah. Oh. So just for reference, Dune won that first book. Mm -hmm. on audible it's 21 hours yep. dune is children of dune is dune 2 and that one is 16 so 21 16 and dune messiah is eight hours so children of dune and dune messiah put together is almost just as long as the first book yes page wise or min word wise bearing in mind that eight hours amber of dune 2 i don't know if you read it I read the I read Dune two and three a long time ago. Like I don't even I all I remember is the thing that happened to the grandson. Well, the thing that he did. So was it the grandson? I think it is. Yeah. The son of the grandson. But yeah, Dune two is just like whoa. They're all like I say they're just all off their nuts. They're not on spots. They're and very Duncan weird. And I read the first book a few well, times. Then. Yeah. And you just go through page page after page of his what was his name? I've got I've got his Herbert name wrong, didn't I? What did I call Frank him? Frank Herbert. You called him James, didn't you? Or James <laughs> Herbert. I think so. Yeah. Okay. Completely different author of a completely different genre. <laughs> but it's seen, yeah, it just, it's just page after page of trippy, hippie, dippy, like whoa, man. They just go on and on, and they're looking at the universe and the stars. And I, I do like to read a book when I'm on holiday, and I just, I just kept putting it down and having another drink. <laughs> <laughs> it makes you want to do drugs. <laughs> um, I need, I need to Are you sure it was the book that was all hippie, off the tits? <laughs> <laughs> we just come across that way. <laughs> so that's so that's thumbs up. I'm loving this because there's all thumbs up for free body problem. Yeah. Thumbs up, obviously, June 2, a bit late in the day, but like, still, there's no moans and groans. So, looking forward. Mm. So, I think we've been too positive. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think I need, some, from News Free, I now need some negativity on these trailers that we're seeing. I need you to tell me what you think is looking so shit out of them trailers. We've got a we've got a list of trailers here. Who wants to give me a shit one? If you Acolyte. have one, I have. Acolyte. Nah, I thought Taters was going to go for that. I, just, I, that's, that. I don't even think that's worth mentioning. Oh, I thought I was. You, gonna... you know what? The one trailer I was surprised by, in terms of, I thought it might have been good, was the Crow. I didn't like that. No. I did not no. like that at all. I didn't like the Crow one. That was my least no. favorite. You know, Crow was terrible. It, and do you know the trick they're missing there? Is the fact that you can have different resurrected people. Like the right, but Crow can be all different. You know, like um, Taters, the, the prey, the predator yes. thing you write. Yes. Different character, different yes. moment in time, different. They even went there with the Crow. Yes. They, they done a character from the Crow Nation mm -hmm. who was resurrected by the Crow. But what they've decided to do, because old Skarsgård, who's, who's in it, he's a good actor. I, I forget what a director's done now. And the trailer looks visually impressive. But all they're doing is rebooting the Brandon Lee crow. No, no like, they're not. No, they're not. They're trying to reboot the Brandon Lee one. If The Brandon Lee one... Drive it. Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying. They're trying to reboot the Brandon. There's too much talk. There's, there's too much exposition straight away, even in the trailer. They're telling yeah, you too much. They're not showing you enough. They could have called that that crow. They could have done any yeah. other person in any other city, in any other, rather than adapt that graphic, that first graphic novel again. But mm -hmm. I don't think they're even doing that. They're rebooting the film. Now, they're not even <laughs> the graphic novel, which the first film so succinctly and superbly adapted. That first film 
they've lobbed that out the window and they're just watching the Brandon Lee film and they're going, hmm, I don't like this, I don't like that. Let's modernise this. Let's make this look cleaner. It looks all clean and neat. Yeah, see, now I love The Crow. I love Brandon Lee, The yes, Crow I movie. Love. I ab- I absolutely love that movie. And the fact is, again, you watch that. There's not much talk. It isn't like, oh, we're going to go and do this and I'm doing this because of so-and-so. It's show. They're doing it right. It's like, we're going to show you why he's doing this. They're going to show you why he's going for revenge. In this one, they're just telling you everything. Straight well, away, like the plot away. is basically given away, like in the trailer. So if they're doing this for a new audience, it's like, here's a movie and this is what it's going to be about. Exactly <laughs> what it's going to be. Yeah. yeah. That's it. yeah. <laughs> All the way through. Yeah. It, it was terrible. Bits. It was a terrible trailer. And do you know what? I was I, I got sucked into it because originally when I first heard they were doing another crow movie, I got a little bit excited about it. And then hear that and it's like, nah, I'm not up for that. See that and it's just nah, it was terrible. It, it missed I felt like it missed the gothic element to it as well. I didn't feel like it was very gothic. Like, like Hogg said, it was clean. It didn't it didn't feel gothic no, at all. It's homogenized. It's just a homogenized kind of there's no grit. There's no kind of no. And it's good because it's going to be a 15. I don't know what the original crow was because when you watch it back, I don't know, there's, there's a bit of eye carving out and stuff. But yeah. other, um, it was all right. Wait, I wonder if it's it felt cleaned up because the sort of goth fashion or whatever is more, it's become more mainstream than ever before. I don't know. It, I, it I, I, any used to be... In that. Very. It used to be very fringe, and now it's rather popular. Yeah. No. I, I, but wouldn't you think they would embrace it then, if it was that mainstream? Yeah. No, because now you've now it's now it is looked at as a fashion statement. Like it's it's a you know rather than a whole lifestyle and music and uh, you know there's a mood with it. Now it's like this is just how I dress. <laughs> Does that make sense? Yeah, Do you know what I mean? That's where you're but, going, but they kind of did that with even the soundtrack of the original one. Yes. Was the Cure, I think Nine Inch Nails were on there. Yeah, there was loads. It was so good. They emb- again, keep saying it, they embraced, they thought, because... Well, yeah, but I mean, that's what I'm talking about is for today, the reason why it doesn't have that feel is because the impression <laughs> of that corner of society, of the world, of people in general, the goth corner, the dark one... Is more mainstream, not like they've taken that and expanded it. As in, people on the outside are like, "Ooh, I like this aesthetic," and you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, so now they've created yeah. a show that will appeal to that big audience that exists now. Whereas the Crow, the original, captured that tone, captured that. I, I'm going to say aesthetic, but it's more than just that. Yeah. There's something. There's something solid there, yeah. and people were drawn to that for what it is. Whereas now they're taking it and saying, oh, the ton of people like this aesthetic. Let's make this movie for a ton of people. And it, that's why I think me, does that make, am I coming make, making sense? Yeah. I, yeah. I think I, I mean, it's become the norm. It's become more, yeah, it is more mo- recognizable, not right mainstream, but I still don't think they, I, I don't think they've gone there. They, they, they have not hit the narrow anywhere near. They just, they've, they've missed by a mile. And you only have to give the guy a different name. Or even make it, if they wanted to, if they really, really wanted to, and I'll, I'll make the comparison with Prey again, mm-hmm. where they, they gave us that Indian girl, and yep. I know we had our debate over that movie, but I think they was brave to go there and do that, make her, and I think more or less, I mean, I didn't hate it, the, the, the film. I know, Tate, as you, you, you loved it. But oh, yeah, I thought it was really good. I enjoyed I it. I liked it. They did not. So why have they done that with? And I know it's not the same people. So they let's let's call that a success for now. Pride. Mm-hmm. Let's call that a success because they it's a predator film, but it's over there. Yeah. They reboot the Arnie film with the crow. I just think they're missing the trick with that same concept. Because what they're doing is they're rebooting the Brandon Lee film. They could have set that film anywhere. That's it. Instead of just going over there, don't call him Eric Draven. Just yeah. mm. he could have been his cousin. Yeah, yeah but uh, imagine all different yeah. places you could have gone with that. You could have gone, <laughs> like, the, like you say, you 
could have done no it. No nation. You could have gone like medieval times. You could have gone anywhere with it. You go, just go back in time a little bit. Like, um, uh, I don't know why I'm thinking of the seventies feel of uh, the John Wick spin-off where they went yeah. to the 70s. Oh yeah. To to do that. Like just you've only got to go back a little bit, haven't you? And yeah. Just and and then the director's gonna come up, the writer and director are gonna be up for it. Let's put it in the sixties, whatever. You're gonna have a sixties soundtrack. Don't have a, a a kind of like R and B soundtrack. You can have rock and roll whatever you want to do. Just set it somewhere. That's it. Don't reboot. That's the key. Don't reboot. Don't Leave the that. reboots. Because straight away, everyone, like the fan base you've got, and we're not just talking about the fan base of the original graphic novel, like the the, the crusty old hogs like me who remember the graphic novel. I read that graphic novel once. Yeah. And I still prefer the Brandon Lee movie. Yep. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah. And it's a beautiful thing. Yeah. It, re it really was. It really mm. was. It, 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 it was it was a bit clunky the graphic novel, but it was mm. a guy who'd who'd literally written it and drew, you know drew it, sung the theme tune, everything. Yeah, and it all himself. And um, the adaptation was very elegant. Mm. Uh, all the people that have enjoyed that movie, again, we we've, we've had this conversation before. You could bring all of them to your new film. If you didn't adapt the film they love, you like, don't do that. Give us part two or give us part yeah. one and a half over there. Just, I just, just stop the reboots. I, I think they've missed a trick. Yeah, he's a good actor, I agree. So he's a good actor. The trailer looks de design wise looks good. It looks like they've spent a lot of money on it. But but giving us a a polished version of that glorious moment. That everyone loves. So I don't know. I don't just think they missed a the trick. That's well, what are you going to do? You, you're going to reboot it. You're going to try and make it new straight away. The people that watch the old one, like myself, are going to be like, "No, I don't like that." Exactly. Or you're going to try and copy it exactly, which straight away it's like, "Well, no, you didn't need to do that because I've already got it." This yeah. is like, leave the reboot alone. Yeah. You're going to be comparing it straight away. He doesn't look yeah. like Brandon Lee. Yeah. He doesn't do this. Where's his guitar? Well, I don't know. Yeah, but straight away, I don't know. The algorithm tells them what to do anyway. Well, so. Like I said, that for me, that was that was the, that was the shit out of that bunch of trailers we looked at. Yeah. What about anyone else? Anything else more to say about the crow? Have we now that the crow? Have we buried the crow? <laughs> that, that version of the crow. So yes. basically, none of us are looking forward to that one then. I don't no. even know if I'll watch it. Yeah, I, I will have to. I will be. But drawn towards it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Another one that just looked again. Why? Why have you done? Is that the the penguin? Yeah. The, I was very confused about that one. <laughs> literally, I'm just sitting there thinking, what? Nothing is offensive. Colin Farrell. I think they put. They tell you what awards he's won at the beginning of the trailer. Uh, Are they trying to do what the Joker did? Yeah. Well, I don't know. But, but the problem is, though, with, with the Joker's an iconic villain, okay, you could arguably do one-shot films of a lot of different Batman villains. But to do a show in Matt Reeves's version of Gotham, all you're creating, I think Hogg said it perfectly, all you're doing is the Sopranos. You're not making <laughs> it superhero. Yes, that's you're, so you're, true. But, but you're not making it superhero, are you? There's nothing in there for it. You can do a realistic realistic version, but when it's the Penguin, like the intrigue of the Joker movie was that he's absolutely nuts. That's the intrigue, and you're intrigued by the performance, and it's still something different. It's just a crazy man going crazier. That's all the Joker movie is, and it's the fact that he's called the Joker why everyone went to see it. If You could, you could call him Bob, and it would, the movie wouldn't have done half as well. On that, on that Joker, on the Joker movie, but with the Penguin, because he's not as crazy, or it's not going to be as a like mesmerizing performance. All you're seeing is a gangster. It's a gangster film. 
I actually had to look up like, is this actually meant to be the penguin from like Batman? Like I, I couldn't Batman. figure it out. I had to Google it and look it up. Yeah, or is it a guy? Is it a gangster that's called himself the penguin after the comic character, the bloke in the comics? Like, yeah, because because it could it could be that it's so grounded. And I know you know I think you all know by now. Like for me, when it gets too, if you give us the gap, give us a gangster flick. You know, Scorsese can do it. Um, who's who's the other director? Uh, you know, Tarantino can do it. They can all give us a gangster flick. But where do you have to, why does it have to be called the, I don't know. Well, I do know why. The marketing guys have looked at the algorithm. They sit in front of the screen and they went, right, that Matt Reeves Batman went down well. Who was the villain? Penguin. Is Colin Farrell available? Yeah. It's, that's what it's about. So we, we, we kind of all know. But for me, it's just boring. It's not my... The, 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 the thing is you can do a more there's a there's a certain level of ground in it you can do a more grounded penguin like they did in gotham like the young penguin that young actor there that he did was. it he was awesome he was there. um and it wasn't ridiculously mm. over the top but oh, you could tell he you could tell he was the penguin yes, he was. it was still believable it was still believable yes. wasn't it yeah yeah, he, yeah but but he was a bit like heath ledger's joker yeah. Hmm. Oh my God. It's crazy. That's kind of as grounded as I wanted to see it because he was only because he was in the real world. But there's no way a, a character like that exists in the real world. Whereas the Joker film really did try to put him in. They really, they went one step further than Nolan. So Nolan with Heath Ledger for me, they just had Nolan went, here's the real world. Here's Batman. Lol. Here's the Joker. <laughs> Lol. And that, that was as grounded as Nolan got. And then he dealt with it. it until the third film with Bane and all that. And I think he really went off the rails. <laughs> <laughs> For the Joker, it was that, that caricature of something insane in the, in the real world, which is a bit different. And I know we're getting right into tiny little details now. It's not grounded as much as because that Heath Ledger character for me was so gloriously over the top and kind of a force of nature, which the Joker should be, rather than an ordinary man who's a little bit mad. Oh, <laughs> look at me. <laughs> I've got, I'm a bit nutty, me. I've, I've had a dream about the girl next door. And it was, don't get me wrong, it was a good film. I enjoyed it. But that's grounding it rather than setting it in the real world. There's a big difference there for me, anyway. Mm. Don't know if that makes sense. Yeah, he's he's too ordinary for for a gangster. He's too ordinary. Mm. Yeah, he's meant to be extraordinary. He's meant to be, the, you know, the the nemesis of a superhero. Well, it's... as well as as well, looking at looking at the Batman movie, and you're looking at the bad guys. Okay, you want to do a series? Do Catwoman or do Riddler? Because Catwoman, you can have a slightly different story, mm -hmm. and Riddler would be an interesting one because he was the main bad guy of that film. You could do something a bit more interesting with those, but they've chosen Penguin, and it's all it is is a gangster flick. Mm -hmm. And Penguin, for me, the gangster world works with Batman, like the Falcones and all that sort of stuff that was in in like especially like Long Halloween. But you need Batman as your as your person in the background, and I don't know if they're going to be doing that. How popular is Penguin as a villain in? The Batman universe or Batman stories, I guess. Because I mean, he's I know the, who he is, but I mean, how does he measure yeah. against the others? He's in the, uh, he's in the top possible question, actually. I suppose he's, I would say he's the constant. I would say the, he's the con the, the the constant one that's just there in the background. Hmm. He's not, he's but not do people really him. love him he's as a villain? He's dangerous, no. Batman. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I mean, I wouldn't say he's an overly dangerous villain. He's he's been involved in some good storylines, but he's always just in the background, running his little crime firm. Like that's yeah, pretty much be, it. He will be behind stuff, like in the comics, he will mm. be behind a lot of things. So you would, I I don't know, there, there would be another villain doing something. And yeah. 
is he the one pulling the strings? He's got the money, but other people are doing the work. Like, see, the Joker was interesting because he went in there and did the work. Mm. Yeah. yeah, he did it all. He organized it and set it all up, and he was writing your face, and it was all over the shop. But yeah, with the Penguin, it would be at the end of a story where it'd be, oh, Batman has solved the crime, and he's, you know, six issues. Yeah. Arc, and then well, like, because I'm thinking even Lex Luthor went in and got his hands dirty. Mm. You yeah. know, so maybe that's why he's not intriguing, even to you guys who are fans of the franchise. Like I'm not as much, but I know who he is. But I, I literally had no. I was like, is this really supposed to be part of a superhero story? Like I, I actually thought this was a gangster movie, like you said, Hog, that was taking the name the Penguin. You know, like I thought that's what it was. Like I didn't, I was like, wait a minute. And then I Googled it and I was like, yes, this is a Marvel, like the, or DC or whatever. This is actually supposed to be part of that universe. It was very weird. Well, boring. Well, you know, bland. I mean, I don't know if it's going to reach an audience. I hope, you know, I hope it does. And Farrell's going to give a good performance. I don't like him personally, but you know, that's probably another irritant that <laughs> around him. I don't like him. I don't like what they're doing with the character. But with Gotham, and I know that Liz has watched it all. Have you watched that, Taylor's Gotham? Gotham, I watched, um, where did I get up to? I, I think I got about, I think I've, I think I've done season four. And Amber, are you familiar with that Gotham series? But was it season I heard about it, but I didn't care. I, I, no, season, <laughs> that's fair enough. That's fair enough. But what they did do, they had all the young actors in it, and it was almost, it was almost an Elseworlds. Was it? Was it season five where uh, Marina Backer in come in? No, season five was the last season. So was it season four that Marina Backer in come in? She came in way earlier. Yeah. Um. What, uh, then I don't remember. Yeah. <laughs> she was in it from pretty much season end of season one. Again, I'll, I'll use that word embrace again. What Gotham did was embrace the madness of, because Gotham is such a cesspit of, you know, it's producing these weird and wonderful, wacky characters. So you had the guy, you had uh, the Riddler, the, the, actor, the Riddler, the actor who was playing like a young Catwoman actress, well, I, no, actor, we've got to call them actors now, haven't we? All the act, all the young actors in it that was playing the the young rogues gallery were absolutely spot on for me. Yeah, because they was just that little they had that eccentricity about them. I think, I think Mad Hatter was my favourite out of all of them. Who's that? Mad Hatter was my favourite out of all of them. To be fair, yeah. it was quality. And I must admit, the one, the whole Jerome stuff, who was supposed to be the Joker, that was the one bit I didn't like about Gotham. Yeah, that, that was, was the good. one bit. Yeah, that's yeah. Right. But other than that, yeah, it was it was awesome. Anyway, that was the penguin. Is there who has got a trailer that they like the look of that they're thinking, oh Deadpool Free. That's a bit sexy. Deadpool Free. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't on my prepared list. I know it wasn't Not on, on your the list. list. Oh, I don't know why I bother. I still uh, must admit. Anyway. I'll let you talk about it though. If you, oh, it looks, it look looks very it. fun. It, it's back on form, absolutely. We're well, we're hoping. It, it looks that way just from the trailer. I agree. Mm. I agree. But did you guys feel like it went off in, in Deadpool too? No. So you said you're saying it's back on form. I wouldn't. I wouldn't say off. It went sideways a little bit. There was there was there was lots of moments in Deadpool two that were very funny. But in terms of what number one did, number three looks like it's doing again. Okay. Yeah, if that makes sense. That's why I'm saying yeah. it's back on form. Mm. It's more yeah. like number one, in oh, my eyes at least. Oh, when you said back on form, I, th I thought you meant the whole genre. No. <laughs> superhero film genre is back on form, which, yes. If, if, if all superheroes moving forward could be more like this, then yeah, that would be the form to follow. But well, that would get boring very quickly as well. No, well, I was surprised at the second film. And uh, and do we think we're going to see Cavill in Deadpool three? Oh. Who's believing? Who's believing the hype and the the rumours? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's going to be Wolverine. I think he's, Cavill's going to be doing Wolverine. That's a good 
That's a good mm. chat, Ace. But doesn't it, I, I thought that what's his face is like, I'm going to play Wolverine every time, like no matter who he is, like whatever. You know, the actor who's been playing Wolverine, Logan. Yeah. Hugh, Jackman. Hugh Jackman. Hugh Jackman, that one. No. Oh. <laughs> yes that guy amber that's what i do you you're here i invite you on to be the sensible one and it's, it's funny though amber because it's always hugh jackman if you actually go back and watch a lot of previous podcasts it's can you, always can hugh you jackman get all the you right from in the future Anyway, <laughs> now I I I can honestly I can see uh, uh, Cavill as Doctor Doom. I could see him as a Doctor Doom type mm. guy. That's just so what for me? Okay. No, I'm I'm not saying taters that you, you you're wrong or anything like that. But for I, me, I don't know. Why would you get Cavill to just put a cape and a helmet and everything on and a mask? Oh, let's get Cavill to do that. You could get anyone to do that. Yeah. Get an unknown to do that. Get Cavill to do Captain Britain or Wolverine. Maybe he'll just do a voice of something. Yeah. I'm, I'm with Liz. I'm with Liz. I'm, I don't know. I reckon Wolverine. I, don't know. I, think, I think Wolverine. But, but, okay, because we know it's going to be multiverse. Shout out, with Deadpool. We know it's going to be multiverse with Deadpool 3. We yeah. know Hugh Jackman. They've managed to get Hugh Jackman dragged out for one more. Whether he would want to do any more other than that, I don't know. But I think we're going to have... It would be quite nice to have the trade-off. Hugh Jackman's last one, Cavill's first appearance, Wolverine. Mm. <laughs> what are you humming at? What are you humming about, Amber? I don't know. You don't care. <laughs> you just... Don't. You're going, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> no, I like the thing is, like, X Men is probably my favorite out of everything, but and, and it's because of the live action film, the first, the old, older one, the one that came out in the what 2000 ish, 2000, 2001, whenever that came out. Literally re watched the first film this afternoon, it's still good, holds mm. up, doesn't it? Was, was it 2000 or was it 99? It might have been 99. Yeah, it came out. It came out. Oh wait, no, it didn't. Before, it came out before Tobey Maguire Spider Man, didn't it? It came out very similar time though, because I I I went to a drive-in theater and it was uh those two movies. I'm like mm. what what great movies to go see at the drive-in? It was uh X Men the first one, and then it was Spider Man the first one. Nice. It was great. And the, the I I just really enjoyed it this afternoon. It was, and it was, what provoked me to do it was a our cinema night next week and i was thinking what about x-men 2 because that is i still think x-men mm. do you know what i was going to say for type of spider-man was going to be my choice for cinema night Ooh, so perhaps let's do it. Let's do it. I'm, up for that. I'm up for that oh yeah absolutely yeah. anyway that's for personal that's for personal conversation we've we've, <laughs> we've, we've <laughs> entertained here we've got many many thousands of you <laughs> um no so when i re i rewatched that because of the animated cartoon mm -hmm. everyone is, is literally unloading in their pants over and i thought right i've got a, and when i watched it i just thought all right there's nothing offensive about it but mm -hmm. everyone's going so mad about it yeah it wasn't this isn't my X-Men. Like, where's my... I know where my X-Men are. They're in the comics that I read in the mid to late 80s. Chris Claremont writing, John Byrne on the art, and that's where the cartoons and the films have come from. Mm. Those are the characters that were created then. That's where that all comes from. But that's what I grew up with. Mm. So I grew up with the animated as well. So animated yeah. with 97 so or 7. You, First. No, so, right, so the animated the animated I was right so uh, x-men 97 is trying to follow on from the animated that i watched which was 92 mm. to 96 yeah and this is 97 following on like so much so they're trying to copy exactly what they were doing between 92 and 96 yeah, yeah. It doesn't work see even, even the opening sequence they've, they've tried to copy it exact and it just looks shit see i've got to show you i thought you'd be all over it 
I thought, I thought right, it just, be, you would be like, this is shocking for me. I thought you'd be. I watched the first episode of 97 and, and it was nice having nostalgia. I hear the theme tune again and all that. Not nostalgia, yeah. but it was very, I found it a bit boring, to be honest. It was, I got through the first episode and was like, I can take it or leave it. I, I didn't have a feeling either way, really, on it. So I watched the first, all three of them. I watched all three of them. And I'm not somebody who watched the cartoon or read the comics consistently. Like, I mean, seriously, if they were on and nothing else was on, or I didn't have a VHS that I really wanted to watch, I would watch that. So I wasn't invested in any of it, but I was watching it and I was going, I I think I want to go back and watch the cartoon again. Like I want to watch the whole thing all the way through because it, it did that thing where it had the cheese of the nineties cartoons, you know, and I felt that coming on a little strong and I thought this isn't going to work for a new audience. I really felt like, like I was enjoying it because I was like, wow, I feel like I'm watching a cartoon from the nineties, but, um, but I don't know how that's going to resonate today because people are used to like anime and the quality of performances and writing that you're getting in anime. And like even the last airbender uh, cartoon, very well written. So I don't know how it will resonate with a young audience that has had exposure to sci-fi, superhero, adventure, fantasy type stories that have humor and have that element of seriousness to it, where you're getting also quality in the performances and the script. And like, I felt the 90s cheese very strong in this. (laughs) It made me want to go watch the 90s show. Like, to get the genuine article you know not that i felt like this didn't do a good job at trying to be exactly that but i wanted to ask you guys like taters you you weren't too pleased no see i didn't like it no i didn't like it yeah i i think i don't know i I don't know how to sum it up it might be that i'm biased towards the 92 to 96 because that's what i watched um i don't know maybe they're just trying too hard is that such a bad thing I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if I'd be complaining if they tried to change it too much. I don't, I, I can't say it. I don't know. <laughs> I'm confused. Something about it. I'm watching it, and like I say, even the title sequence, just like, oh, no, I'm not going to swear. Was it because it was so much like the original, but not the original? Yeah, probably. You probably hit the nail on the head there. That's probably what it is. It's not the original. Because I was thinking that with a, like that monologue that in Airbender that Grand Grand did in the live action, everybody really hated it. And yeah, the performance wasn't stellar. It was it was very narrow. But I, I was thinking about it. I was like, I wonder if a lot of people are really hating on this because they've only ever heard it performed one way. Mm. And it was done every episode for like, what, 60 some odd episodes or something. And so to hear it done another way kind of makes you go, uh, what? It just feels off. So I'm wondering if that might be part of it. Like this was attempting so hard to be an exact replica and continuation of the 90s, but it's not it. And so it just feels off. There's too many changes to the characters. Oh, okay. It, that's what I wanted to know. As well. The aesthetic as well. Okay. Uh, like the biggest, the biggest one everyone's upset about is Rogue. Which I, rogue? I get rogue, yeah. Okay, so what was rogue, what the change? Yeah, well, uh, she is like <laughs> super feminine in the original. She took okay. The curves. Okay. She took the curves away completely, and she's ah. like a pancake. <laughs> 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 okay. That's like that's, that seems to be the trend nowadays. It's just yeah, take away everything that makes them what they were, and yeah, I don't know. I don't know, like I say, I'm probably biased because that's my X-Men there yeah. and they're trying to copy it and it just it's not working for me. Mm. But that's me. But see, like, so for me, having no attachment to the original, being familiar with it, but not attached to it, I watched this new one and I felt like I had gone back in time. Mm. Like, I was like, whoa, like, <laughs> do you I, know what I mean? I, I can see what, I can see why you would do that. Again, you, you, yeah. you've seen that, you've seen this. It's like, wow, this actually does look like a 90s cartoon. Yeah. It does. Yeah. But yeah, I don't know. I, I mean, I, I watched the first episode and just, I just had, I've just got to put my hand up and go, this isn't for me. It's not what you're doing wrong. Like, it's just you, the wrong audience. Yeah. 
I am not familiar with the 90s. In the 90s, I was starting up my own business, having my first child, getting married, <laughs> buying my first house, and I didn't watch the X-Men in the 90s, all right? Sorry, everyone. Your priorities are all wrong, mate. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, yeah, I'm sorry. I've got all my priorities wrong. <laughs> so I am not familiar. What I am familiar with is the comics from the 80s. And mm. I know that the, the cartoons were well beloved. When this new series come out, I thought, right, I've got to check this out because everyone's raving. Like on Fred's, and I'm in this comic community on Fred's, which are all positive and they're lovely and brilliant. And we're all sharing each other's videos and loving each other. Right, and everyone's loving this X Men. But so just for me, it just seems like it's written for children again, mm. which probably would have been done in the 90s. Now, the comics wouldn't be written for children. And I know this sounds a bit counterintuitive, but bear with me. When you write for children, you, you know, you're talking down. And, and children see it, but when you, you, you create mm -hmm. a story for children, you, you, they see it. They don't want that. But like Harry Potter, you would have young children get right into them, those books. You know, this young adult, and I think Harry Potter might have kicked it off. And mm -hmm. I know I'm, I'm going off the rails a little bit here, maybe. So guide me back on, guys. But those Harry Potter books, she didn't write those specifically for children she wrote fantasy stories she mm. wrote a fantasy story with with children in it that we all liked from 13 to 93 mm. she didn't she didn't sit down oh jk rowling she didn't sit down and go oh i'm gonna write a story from i mean i might be completely wrong here she might have sat down and wrote it for a daughter or son or whatever she had because he was a single mother at the time with this X-Men cartoon, getting back on track, because none of you are guiding me back on. I just want to see where you go, to be honest. Yeah, <laughs> see. Just want you to just ramble on. You'll wake up an hour later and go, yay. <laughs> yes, adios, yay, bye. Um, no, I, I just think, and the comic is doing the same thing. They've done a, a, a kind of like a... um. What do you call it? Before the, the cartoon, the prelude, the prequel. Prequel. Thank you, Taters. The prequel to the cartoon in the comic. And again, I've read the so I've picked the comic up. And I'm, I'm, I'm looking, and I don't mind anima, a, animation or anything, but I can just tell when it's a bit infantile. Mm. When they're toning everything down and everything is everything's down here because someone somewhere has gone, oh, we're writing this for a five-year-old. <laughs> It doesn't come across the Batman animated. So getting back to the nineties when I wasn't watching X Men, I've I've got my first child and I'm sitting him in front of the Batman animated adventures, and that cheered me up. Like that entertained me, and that entertained him, because it wasn't specifically aimed at children. It was made to entertain. An audience. It wasn't. It, it was obviously not going to be any adult content. You weren't ever going to have Catwoman swing down with the team <laughs> and all the rest of it and go, and go like you know, <laughs> Shell Pfeiffer. But it was. It was just done. I, I don't know if that makes sense, but this X Men, yeah. just for me, this latest X Men cartoon is just infantile. Yeah, I'm going through that now. I'm going through. I have to sit down and watch Teen Titans Go. And I love it. It's fantastic. <laughs> what? It's hilarious. <laughs> what, Batman animated? No, Teen Titans Go. Oh, oh mate, get me in front of Batman it's animated. Man. It's, it's on Netflix, fantastic. Man. My son loves it. So we sit down and we watch it and, and it's... Oh, yeah, get him on Batman brilliant. animated, man. It's Batman. on Netflix now. What's yeah. that? Animate. Batman animated is on Netflix. Oh, yes, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah get him on it. Mm. That is fine. That is absolutely fantastic. And that I know the animation is now a bit dated, the technology behind it, but I don't know. Have you watched it on Netflix, Liz? Yeah. Is it is it cleaned up a bit or a little bit, not much. Sometimes not much. animation, because it's cell by cell animation, it's the mm. old version. And this is when uh, Spielberg I'm all right with that. 
this is when Spielberg was at uh, Warner Brothers. Mm. He was overseeing it all. Animaniacs, um, Batman animated. This is when he was overseeing some good shit. So, Hog, did you watch the first three episodes of the X Men ninety seven? It's the first one. Okay, because when you're saying that it felt like it was for kids, I I was kind of going maybe the first episode, but it gets a little bit more. It gets a little further into it in episode two and three. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, oh. at the end of episode two, I kind of went. Oh, okay this is different <laughs> um but i don't know how well it follows the comics or anything i have no idea like that was you know what when uh taters you're, you said that they've made some character changes you were talking about yeah, physically yeah so okay is at the end of episode two well i'm not telling well, I'm I'm gonna say. it's it seemed rather fast-paced and like they're taking the story in interesting directions anyway. I, do you you want me to go into go into yeah, it? Yeah, like, go into it. Might as well. Okay, so Phoenix shows up at the door after the baby's been born. Another one. Like there's two of them. There's two Phoenixes. And turns out the one that had the baby is a clone. Yes. The one that's been yeah. with them is a clone. Yeah, Madeline it's Madeline Pryor from Yeah. From the they they're introducing that. And don't and take us. When I say right. it's the goblin queen. <laughs> we don't go there. No. Um, but Madeline Pryor, Mr. Sinister, creates Madeline Pryor to have a baby by Cyclops. So yeah. And so to combine Jean Grey's powers, Cyclops's powers, Mr. Sinister is going to be rock and roll. So I, I love all that. I love all that. Yeah. And, and perhaps I'm biased because I've read all that in the comics. But don't forget, I've read all that in the comics 30 years ago. <laughs> so that is so old hat for me. If, if you think about one of your favourite things you read 30 years ago and someone brings it back in a cartoon now. I couldn't read 30 years ago, mate. <laughs> you was only an embryo. You was only a um, <laughs> larva. A long, long fertilised egg. Yeah, you was... <laughs> you was only... Well, cause, like, it, it did feel like... Because the first episode, I was kind of going like, all right, some of this stuff's intriguing. And, you know, all right. It, like I said, it made me want to go back and watch the live action first movie. Um, and by the time I got to the end of the second one and then the end of the third one, I was actually invested in some things in the in the cartoon. I was like, I could sit through and watch more of this. I could I could see where like, but if it already exists as an like, you know, as a comic and you're familiar with the story, it might not hit as well with you hawk like you're so familiar with the way the story is going that you're like okay let's get through this bit and me having no exposure to that at all i'm going this not only felt like it came right out of the 90s but i'm also going oh i didn't know this is where i i didn't know if this is where it goes and i wanted to know from you guys is this what happens um i i like magneto <laughs> <laughs> i i was less of a fan of him in the live action than i am in the animation for sure we was all quiet there. I might click that, Amber, just for you. <laughs> I like Magneto. <laughs> <laughs> kind of wondering what's going on between him and Rogue, though. <laughs> Made me sort of go, did the live action change some things? I don't know. <laughs> I sound like they're, they're keeping the best soap opera elements of the stuff that makes X-Men work. and it is That is a great... That's a great way to say it. It's the soap opera stuff. It did have soap opera feeling stuff in it. Like, oh my gosh, I'm married to a clone. <laughs> like, <laughs> if you get a right comics. <laughs> At the end, married to a clone. <laughs> yes. <laughs> if you get a right comics, you, you must have that in your head. If you're going to write superhero comics for an extended period of, period of time, because obviously times have changed, but back in the day, it would be, this is a soap opera with superheroes. It, mm -hmm. That's literally what it was. And in the comics, Cyclops, he abandons. Like, where he's got her pregnant and he was duped, he just abandons her and the kid. <laughs> he just, <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> that's not my fault. I'll put it in and give you a baby. <laughs> <laughs> in the comics, you 
comics, he fucked up. <laughs> in the cartoon, they redeem him because he's not he's not the bad father he was in the comics. But like I say, it's all soap opera. Like it's just and it's all good stuff. And they seem to be that you know, from what you guys are telling me, because I only watched the first episode. I'm not saying I hated it. I just found it childish. But if you're saying it ramps up a bit, then, you know, that kind of encourages me to go back and dip in. Well, Taters, how much of it did you watch? About three minutes. Oh, really? So you didn't watch yeah, it. And I what about you, Liz? Just, yeah, I watched the first episode, the whole thing. I'm the only one who did all the homework. <laughs> I'm the only one who watched it. I will give it. I will give it. Like I said, a, the week's a, been a bit crazy. I, I will make try. I free body I will problems. try. <laughs> Sorry, Amber. <laughs> So I'm the one who doesn't even watch this shit. I watched all of this. <laughs> I insisted on us all doing our homework. Sorry, I, I do apologize. Uh, no, it's so it's funny. Well, you've I shown, you've shown us all up. You, you know, yeah, big time. For once, you, well, I, was I rushing, didn't. I was, I was rushing around doing all my homework today. I wasn't going to watch Roadhouse, <laughs> like if unless I had to. I watched Roadhouse. I did watch Roadhouse. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it sucked you in, as he actually said to the bishop. <laughs> I tell you what, though, off off the back of what you've said, Amber, I will go again. Yeah, to be I fair, I will try again. I, I've got to admit, it, it like, might be like that, but I'll try <laughs> again. And All right. I mean, it's only it's only forty more minutes, right? Well, for you, it'd be sixty because you only watch three minutes. <laughs> you're moaning about uh, rogues. You're mo moan, moaning about the lack of rogues ass. Um, <laughs> poor man, currently. She's super sexy in episode three. Who? Madeline Pryor, the Goblin Queen. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The clone. Jean Grey's. Uh, uh. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. They 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 didn't take her. I mean, I don't know how curvy she was, but her outfit was not hiding stuff. So. Yeah, that's that's what we that's what us comic book geeks like, Amber. <laughs> 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 There's an audience for it for sure. Yes, not me. I'm not saying that's me. Mm. I'm just speaking on behalf of all the others. Yeah. Yes, I'm sure you are. <laughs> it's okay. I've got I've got certain bits of cinema that I watch for very specific reasons, and they're oh. shallow, just as shallow. So. Uh -huh. Hey, yeah. I watched Outlander for only one reason. Okay. <laughs> Who's in that? What, you never heard of Outlander? I kind of have, but... Outlander, it's the Scottish time-traveling, like, this woman from the 50s gets zapped back to, like, the 1700s in Scotland, and there's this very hot, sexy Scott that she falls in love with. It's basically erotica. The The whole show is erotic. <laughs> 50 Shades of Scotland. Yeah. 50 Shades of Jock. It is. It <laughs> totally is. It's just the weather. <laughs> no, in that, the, the first season actually it's the first three seasons i like the first up till the battle of culloden and then i lost totally lost interest because it's like this is all just about sex and stupid stuff like dumb and then uh i was interested to see what they do because they moved to the the u.s right before the the revolutionary war and like they're gonna be involved in that i'm like okay i'd like to see how that goes like but i was only watching for one thing <laughs> after a certain point the list is killed the, yeah pretty much but he's a bodybuilder like but he was like not an oversized bodybuilder he was just very well sculpted and and well lit they lit him very well i'll just shut up now Selling it, baby. <laughs> carry on I, I, I need to know who this is be the promo hey i'm just saying that for the same reason you guys are looking for curves in your cartoon girls i'm looking <laughs> <laughs> i'm looking for good lighting on my naked scotsman <laughs> on his sparring. um well we got lots of front and back views so really mm -hmm. cock, cock and balls uh no not the not the lower front upper front full back oh abs so abs and it was the same it was the same with the women upper front full back oh oh no fanny <laughs> there's an entire episode that is nothing but one long sex scene it is a, it's an hour long episode i'm not joking i'm not joking <laughs> my pen. i need to make notes <laughs> <laughs> uh, i need a box of tissues 
So like, like, if anybody's ever wondering what that show is, like, that's what it is. It's, it's an erotica novel brought to the screen. And, 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 <laughs> and stop striking that pen, mainstream boy. TV, not anyway, anyway uh, it's no, it's not. It's, it's considered not. like, I. it's not, is it an HBO show? No, I don't know what who produced it, but it's it's on Prime. Uh -huh. Anyway, adios for now. Let's all go now. Yeah, I'm off. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Uh, I'll send you guys the best bits. <laughs> the cinematography is beautiful, though. Oh. Um, like they they really went all out in oh, like no. quality <laughs> quality sets, costumes, and cinematography. I'm not joking. Like I was I was legitimately impressed with that because I was expecting this is just a they, Weird they, ass. So they actually had costumes because from what you've just said, you didn't really see much of the costume. Yeah, I'm not the costume gonna... department had an easy day. Oh, oh, it's a quality God. product. It's a qual. That's I think that's maybe really surprising about it. Is it's it is definitely a quality production, hmm. and yet it's obvious. Like it is just like a a story built around a bunch of sex scenes. That's what it is. Yes, yes, like this. <laughs> what are those others. <laughs> I love it. We, I brought you on for the intellectual insight, and you give me that. Wow. Yep. Um, we were talking about X Men. <laughs> how, how we how we got on to naked sporans? I think the Goblin Queen. <laughs> that was how we got on to it. <laughs> Anyway, anyway, <laughs> I'm gonna. I don't know. What, I, I don't know. Now, there's no good segue, right? There's no good segue from what we've just been talking about <laughs> to any Doctor Who move apart from moving on. <laughs> Did you? And I know, I know this was proper homework because I'm not a fan. Of what we're going to talk, or I would like to talk about next, just quickly. But I don't know if oh. your homework. Doctor Who. Yeah. Right. Now that trailer. I've tried. It's, it's more. It's more. It's more Doctor Why now. Why bother? Well, I've, I've never been a fan of Doctor Who anyway, so oh, you can show me anything, and I'm not going to like it. But yeah, but I mean, I've, I've obviously when you're a kid and you grow up with it. But I've got to say that trailer. And I watched it just for the sake of it's the new Doctor. It's Disney producing it. And I'll tell you what. You couldn't tell, could you? You couldn't tell that was a Disney production. You couldn't tell this, could you? <laughs> no, there was no telltale signs no, about that whatsoever. There was, no quip, there was no quips, was there? There was no light-hearted bant between two diverse characters my god i've never wow is disney where the long successful franchises go to die yes yeah mm -hmm. now, at this point that that's what it is isn't it it seems it seems so they remind me of like a real estate investor who got in the game too late yeah, <laughs> yeah. you know find dilapidated buildings yeah but I, I I just watched it. I don't know about any of you if you did watch it. was only a minute and a half. And I did watch I watched the trailer. Yeah, I watched the trailer. Watched it, but like I say, I'd never liked Doctor Who anyway. So you could yeah. show me any Doctor Who trailer. I'm not going to like it. Again, it, 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 it was just a generic. Like the Doctors that work, so that everyone that are so beloved are the quirky. You know, it is jokey, but they're the quirky, weird ones. You know, yeah. The tenants of this world, and then going back further to Tom Baker's and mm. further than that, the Pertwee's. And yeah, now, see, I was Pertwee, Tom Baker, Sylvester McCoy. Yeah, but now you've got this new guy. But I don't know about it, what, what it was about this trailer that struck me that I thought was worthy of just a quick mention was the fact that my God, they Disneyfied it, and it sh it looks shocking. Mm. It looks shocking. I can't help but think that this is just another now in the coffin like the last one was getting the woman on board and it's not about oh my god that the gender swap which is in and of itself an insult to fans but i'm not a long time fan 
but it went down badly. Ratings went down. Everything went down when she did it. So they got rid of her, and I can't help but think that it's dead now. It's done. Mm. It's a dead duck. Mm. It was. Is, is it, did anyone else think that? Like it just looked a bit. I say, never liked it. So for me, it is what it is. I turned up and he was going, woo, hello. You know? yeah. I just didn't know, like, are people looking at this big, okay, it's again that, are we bringing in a brand new audience? Because I'm not a Doctor Who fan and I watched it going, would I watch this show? No. no and I, I felt like there was a lot in it that was probably calls out to people who are fans of the show. Right? It won't work. It won't work. You know, he's giving quotes from other series and he's giving quotes that other doctors have said. But like you said, Amber, you've hit the nail on the head. Where's the new audience for this show? Because the ratings for the last lot was all down there, down, 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 down. So what do we do to ramp it up? Uh, we do that. I don't know. It just didn't. I thought it was shocking. Next. No, I did find interesting. Because on the list, there was three Disney trailers. You had Acolyte Doctor Who. I didn't realise, unless it's just the, what I watched, they were doing Alien Romulus. Disney is doing Alien as well? It, was, it, 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 had, the, it had the Disney logo. Oh, 20th in the bottom, box, yeah. Yeah, it had the Disney logo in the bottom corner of Alien Romulus. Yes. And the Romulus trailer actually looked all right. I thought I thought that's quite good. Well, is Disney producing it or are they are they distributing it? Like they bought know, the it, rights to it. It literally just had the Disney logo in the bottom corner of the trailer when I watched it. Yeah, well, they own they own 20th Century Fox, don't they? So I'm assuming the Alien franchise because it's 20th Century Fox and they own 20th Century Fox and they thought they'd get in on it. Mm. I I agree. I think that trailer just tentatively. They're going back to the horror of the first film. Right. I was going to yeah. say. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It felt the horror. Yeah. The trailer for me definitely looks more aliens and alien than we had from previous movies. But the trailer doesn't actually tell you much. No. Yeah. It's, it's, there's not much mm. there. It's just here's some aliens and here's a little bit of narration about something. It's just, yeah. there's not, yeah. yeah it's. Well, wasn't that a teaser? It wasn't really a trailer. I don't, I didn't know. Uh... Really? It was just a pan back. From a spaceship, wasn't it? With some yes. blood all. Where the first film, if you was like the first alien film we all fell in love with, it was say 52% horror and 48% sci fi. You know, you could have set that film somewhere else, whatever you wanted to do. It was, I think it was just that, that, that sliver more horror than sci fi, or call it half and half if you want. And I think, I'm hoping, got everything crossed, that they're going back to that. It just looked like from that teeth. It, it looked more like aliens. Yes. It, it looked more like aliens than it did alien. Really? I think so, personally. Where's the machine guns and the... Oh, actually, no, you're right. No, taters. I will take that back because you had the, the face huggers. All yeah. And going. More like aliens. Oh, the yeah. second movie than it did the first one. Yeah. Yeah. I will retract that from the records. That's all right. So, yes. But other, other than that, I still think that's a thumbs up, that trailer. Yeah, I think that one was. To be well, fair. It's, it's the fact that Ridley Scott's still in on it. Yeah, he's still it's, producing. It's, yeah, but the, uh, mm. Mm? We don't know if he's going down the drain slowly, just more slowly than others. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, maybe. And it's it's, Scott Gladiator 2. <laughs> Coming out this year, isn't it? That's really is Scott. it? Yeah, Gladiator uh, 2, really Scott. What's coming out this year? Oh, Gladiator. Yeah. Gladiator yeah. 2. Yeah, yeah, right. Are we bothered? Are we fussed by that, really? No. no. Well, have we seen anything from it? Do, is there a trailer? I don't think anything? there is. Teaser? I mean, who knows? It, it might literally just be another Gladiator's story, and they've decided to call it Gladiator 2. Yeah, I but... thought it was meant to be. I thought it was meant to be following the son of his mate. I uh, see. I think that's a mistake. Oh well, maybe the wait, wait, the son of his friend. That's yeah. as long as they're they're like the other story is this. It's not involved anymore. Like we're not continuing anything. We're literally just telling another person's story. I don't you know. We'll see. Really continue anything from the first one? He's like he's, he's no, you can't. Died, his son died. He died. Well, it's I don't know. You think they they could take the the queen and be like we're gonna follow her reign? I would think that'd be a bad choice. 
Yeah. You know? Probably will. It's going to be, I'm surprised it isn't Gladiator S. <laughs> 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 they had those in the first gladiator though they had the amazon women and the chariots remember yes Ooh, mm. yes oh and they were black Who knew? and they got slaughtered right away <gasps> you can't say that they did it was i'm just stating what happened in the movie is <laughs> that the recreation uh what was that the um uh, what was that the battle of the battle of um not Mesopotamia. Was it Gaul? No, it was the because the bloke with in the wig. Yeah, and he's telling everybody what it's a recreation of some battle. The emperor turns around to him, doesn't he, Gladiator, and he goes, "Didn't I don't remember? Didn't the Gauls win? You might be right, actually. Didn't they yeah. get slaughtered or something?" And he goes, "Because they win, didn't they? That's yeah, the, yeah, with the chariots with the." Someone's With the razor blades on them. <laughs> laser, laser, laser. <laughs> razor, razor, <laughs> not laser. <laughs> laser blades. Um. Well, the, never mind. I was gonna say it reminded me a little bit of uh, was it Ben Hur? Yeah. There's Except more gory. Well, I don't know. Ben Hur was pretty gory too. <laughs> I still cringe at some of the the accidents in the chariot race. Still yeah. awesome, and you think that all of that. And I know this is old school now, but you think Ben Hur, that was all in camera. Yeah. yeah. There was no CGI. That was stuntmen. That's why everyone got hurt. Yeah. Um, <laughs> there was no CGI. You had real injuries. Um, ah, and actually, on that subject, Furiosa trailer. Oh. The Mad Max Fury Road. I don't know how many years they was in the, the desert. It kind of half killed everyone. Yeah. Cast and crew. When they made uh, Tom Hardy and old Shaiish for Fairon, Fairon in the desert making Mad Max Fury Road. I, I'm, I'm going to say 90% in camera. They was, there were stuntmen. There was guys on motorbikes and women on bungee ropes and everything. They went into the desert and they did all that in camera. Furiosa trailer comes along. It all looks like it was done on a sound stage. Yeah. And do you know what? I really, really, I really want to love it. Because I, I do, I'm just a Mad Max fan. I really want to love it. And the music's there. And um, that Anya Taylor Joy, I think she's awesome. And George Miller is awesome. So why have they CGI'd it? Because you can see it straight away in the trailer. Mm -hmm. but, it's there. So but I think it's it's a part of the style. But the thing is, is that that's not what Mad Max is. Mad Max is gritty, and this was fantasy. I'd rather have it scaled down. I'd rather not have it. Yeah. Just have like two stunts in the trailer, but have them in a real car, in on real sand, and get someone like hung by a real rope or something do, do, yeah. rather than must do, say it, 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 she, she it, like, okay. yeah i didn't recognize chris hemsworth though to be fair yeah i didn't recognize <laughs> him either i thought he's he, he good as a bad guy yeah I'm yeah looking, I, i'd like to see him as a bad guy yeah i am yeah i'm looking forward to that because we haven't have we seen him in a film because i'm when i when you say chris hemsworth i'm just thinking of thor and the action, the Netflix extraction, extraction, right? But in extraction, I think I know it's again like he doesn't have to do a lot of acting, but he does show up for that. He does, hmm. you know, there are moments in extraction. I think, the, particularly in the first one, where he does have to deliver, you know, the the, the, the scenes with the son and the scenes with the Indian. Uh, kid that he's having to rescue and protect and all the rest of it. So are we thinking, are we thinking there's a good actor deep down inside? Mm -hmm. I always felt like there was one in there somewhere. See what 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 was what are so you exactly. putting him up against as a good actor? I mean, he's not a shit actor. Yeah. But what are you saying is a good actor? Well, no, are we having a lot of range? 
Yeah. Like, so like he was unrecognizable in this, and we only got a few lines from him. Yeah. Yeah. Like, do, are we are we thinking he can uh, be a villain? Like, I do, think he can be a villain. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just from that few minutes oh. in the trailer, I think he can be a villain. It's a film I really want to love, but the CGI was so jarring. Um, see, I didn't really get on with Fury Road. Why? I don't know. I like the original Mad Max, and I like the Thunderdome. I didn't really get on with Fury Road. That film, I think that's a bit of movie magic, that. Mm. I really do. I, I thoroughly rate that. that. That's a nine and a half out of ten for me, that Fury Road. Music, the, sound, the soundtrack... The, the action, the pace, the everything. Yeah, mm. George Miller. George Miller's a nutter. The design, the design of it. The again. Oh, I'm going to say embrace again. I love that word tonight. I love that word. <laughs> embrace the madness of the post-apocalyptic world. The Mad Max, like just, and Max isn't in it a lot. No. Well, <laughs> how, I mean, how far after? How far after Mad Max was? Uh, Fury Road meant to be set. We don't talk about it. They don't know. No one knows. Because <laughs> they seem to have a never-ending supply of petrol. Yeah. <laughs> it's still running out. It's still running out. Well, yeah, because they're using it all the time. They're running out forever. It, it... <laughs> <laughs> so, we still haven't spoken about Beetlejuice. Properly. No, not that. The Acolyte. Yeah, I'd not bothered. Tell you Tell you I watched the trailer. Tell you Talk when is it supposed to be set? Tell you knows. It's like it's 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 a few hundred years before uh, the prequels. So that's not in the, even the right timeline. It, it, from what I just, saw in that just... trailer. So are you, Taters? Are you saying you have now officially given up, or what? Yeah. <gasps> this is a monumental moment. It is. It's a sad I, moment. I watched what it. was it that turned you off on the trailer? Oh, I just everything just like literally they started the trailer and that was it. It was all <laughs> downhill from there. <laughs> <laughs> but 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 even in terms of the time, because I thought this was supposed to be thousands of years before Phantom Menace, and then they said it was like a hundred couple of hundred years before. So yeah, straight they, away, uh, so straight they, away again, originally the over. acolyte they had this big glorious plan for the acolyte and it was gonna predate all of this and then all of that and then uh, what was it? We ended up getting the Mangold movie announced, and that's meant to then step in before Acolyte. So they moved Acolyte's time. I, I don't know. It just all got very yeah. confusing. And because I don't straight think away, knew what they because, were because straight away, you're thinking that falls in the realms of Old Republic. Yeah. Like near, near those sort of timelines. And straight away, you're thinking, well, Yoda would have been alive. He'd well, have been yeah. about 500 at that time. So straight away, the timeline doesn't fit. And yeah, it just looked pretty crap to be honest. Well, especially it's meant to be like the emergence of the Sith. Well, that happened way so, before that. It, well, exactly. And this is like, <laughs> so this is predating the rule of two, and it's just like this. Yeah, the, 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 that you're, you're talking kind of thousands. Of, you're talking thousands of years before Phantom Menace. And and again, the, the wording in the trailer where she's talking about the this is uh, this is like beyond or this isn't about good and bad it's about power and it's just like well, well no, it's, it's <laughs> about good and bad we know that story. because that's what that the man said when he first made it and you, did, you didn't see it in the trailer but i've heard that apparently someone's got a lightsaber that turns into a whip what yeah someone's got a lightsaber that turns into a whip that's different how does it work oh, god knows <laughs> But yeah, it just it didn't hit any buttons for me on that, to be honest. It was just it was terrible. I, 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 do you know what? I don't think it's even going to be that bad where we can take the mick out of it and have a good laugh at it. I no. think it's just going to be bad and depressing. It would just be bland. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, just be, it'd be so bland that a bit like a soaker where you can't, like you just said, Liz, you can't mock it. It's just so bland. Every now and again, you can mock it. Oh, what's the name doing this trying to do the stunts like <laughs> middle-aged woman, middle woman flipping over with a with a lightsaber going ooh and, 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 and did you notice as well because they got carrie Ann moss they like gave her like a matrix fighting style yeah i would just see oh. yeah i saw that <laughs> when someone pushes the character and and the feet are on the floor and they just go 
Yeah. Oh, oh that's so Star Wars. Mm. <laughs> oh, God. Like, mm. Anyway, but we're over. I think we've kind of, it's, it's the laser set in. It's, it's gone, hasn't it? Like this, I don't know what they could have showed us. Look at Taylor's little sad face. I know. <laughs> no, I, I don't know what to do with my life anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's oh god knows where they're gonna go with that. And the news is already out that Acolyte Series 2 may not be green lit. <laughs> Tight. Series one isn't even released. I mean they've, technically they've still got time to cancel the first one. They could still just, <laughs> just uh, never put it out. out. Oh they my god. a willow. They could do a willow and just just let's just delete it. Oh I so I so wish I had Willow on VHS now. <laughs> I'll bet you that there's some way to find it. It's out there somewhere. Oh, it's guaranteed. For, Somebody's got it somewhere. For a future fact, cinema. Let me just have a quick. Let me just have a quick. Must be Willow. <laughs> must be Willow somewhere. But I, I suppose the lot. Yeah, and the last trailer to round it all off, guys, is, is Beetlejuice. And I. A teaser, yeah. It's Tim Burton. It's Michael Keaton. I'm, look great. I'm in. Mm. Yeah, I mean, Michael Keaton said what four words? The juice is yeah. back. That's it. Yeah. And it I'm in. I'm in. I'm, I'm, I'm and it's, you know what? I, I, mean, I probably watched Beetlejuice probably when I was about twelve years old. I don't even really remember the film, but straight away watching that trailer, I was like, okay, I'm intrigued. I want to go back and watch the original. Now. Like, I'm intrigued by it. It just looked really good. A bit yeah. wacky. I'm trusting Tim. There's all the episodes of Willow. <laughs> where what what website is that oh just text I'll, it to I'll me message you later. yeah there you go <laughs> um i wonder okay because like we have seen that tim burton consistently puts out something that's at worst good yes right so just having his name in there and then we've got uh michael keaton has come back and we've got jenna ortega who has been pleasing a lot of people with her portrayal of of her work with Tim Burton before I saw somebody saying like, I love somebody wrote a comment somewhere. I love that Jenna Ortega is Tim Burton's new muse after Johnny Depp. She the part, <laughs> um, doesn't she? She does look the part. Yeah, she does. She's you, you look at Winona Ryder from the first one and you look at Jenna Ortega and there is that. Uh, yeah. yeah. I mean, I would absolutely buy that. Winona Ryder rather than Johnny Depp. Mm. Yeah, well, Win Winona Ryder is in this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can see her. She's in it for sure. That's her. Yeah. No, I mean, as in uh, Tim Burton's new muse. Yeah, his new muse is Jenna Ortega. I'd mute. I'd. No. I'm not gonna go there. We've had enough. Okay. Uh. Yeah. We've had enough. We've we've had enough kilts and <laughs> outlandish talk. Yes. <laughs> so I'm not gonna go there with Jenny. <laughs> General Tiger tonight, not tonight, Joseph. <laughs> <laughs> but the comment that I was making was simply that it seems like having like a combination of so much success makes it intriguing to an audience that appreciates good quality entertainment like that. You know, like it's got Tim Burton, that's a plus. It's got Jenna Ortega, who we've seen working with with Tim Burton before. We like that, and it's got Michael Keaton from the original. These people seem to believe in it. So yeah. they they're trusted sources, you know. Yeah, yes, you couldn't. Plus, you know, if you're gonna if you're gonna make if you're gonna cook something up, those ingredients are, are gonna create. I hope something. Yeah, I said to Hog in the week, it's just nice to see Burton and Keaton working together again. And the first thing that went through my head is, I hope they're talking because you know they've worked together multiple times in the past it'd be quite nice to see a, a batman free on the side a proper batman mm. that'd be nice finish off the batman, burton trilogy yeah. yeah finish off the burton trilogy that'd be lovely yeah. you want to go nuts let's go <laughs> let's go nuts <laughs> <laughs> why do i feel like we missed a trailer for some reason um nope we didn't we didn't never mind I thought there. it was I thought it was Furiosa, but we did talk oh, about that. We could have talked about Roadhouse, but nobody bloody watched it. Yeah, <laughs> sorry. I'm so sorry. House of the Dragon. 
to oh yeah watch. that's right that's the trailer came out for that or teaser or something came out for it recently didn't it or am i imagining it, it might, no it made me want to mm. watch it what? yeah House, House of the Dragon too. House, oh, that, right. Okay. The second and season. I didn't watch mm -hmm. the first series all the way through, so I'm thinking. Do the I... first. You didn't watch the first season all the way through. Not all the way through. I got so far, and I just. Um, I, don't know. I did. I watched all the way through. Yeah. Was it? It was... it was on here that somebody said that the first season felt like it was leading up to the start of the story as a was that yeah. here where i heard that yeah yeah yeah. It was okay the first season, the first it, it season was, it would have been liz yeah the first season is your build up you know at the end of the first season it's set up for the war it's ready to go it's ready to kick off in season two yeah like i wasn't invested in anything until the final episode like the yeah. final moments of the final episode i was like oh shit now i want to see what happens like i never had that feeling throughout the entire series up until that moment yeah i can't i can't do that amber I can't. yeah i know like I, I think for me it was probably episode eight or nine when the king went. That was the bit that I really enjoyed the most. Like the seeing the king deteriorate. That was quite cool. Um, and yeah, the final episode just kicked it right off straight away. You're intrigued about what happens next. So yeah, I'll give it a watch. I'm not clamoring for it. I'll just watch it as and when. Um, but yeah, I'm, I am intrigued by what what they do with it. I think it went down well though. The first series. I think yeah. People liked it. They all said it wasn't as good as the first few seasons of Game of Thrones, but it was still good and had promise. Well, because the other thing they had to watch was Rings of Power, so... True. Yeah, it was at the same time, wasn't it? It was at the same time. time as Rings of Power. So you were kind of limited. Have we got that this year? When series two of that out? Oh, yeah. I got a clue. Far too soon. Far too soon. I thought that was this year. It must be. It could be next year and it'd still be too soon. <laughs> must be. But they don't have anything else for season. What's it for another one, right? Because they fired everybody. Yeah, but they brought them all back, didn't they? And the and the horse died <laughs> <laughs> after reading the script. Yeah, a horse died. No, that was one of the directors, apparently. <laughs> what the horse? <laughs> Yeah, the horse died. The horse died. They couldn't film uh, episode. Well, three. all it says that it's going to come out this year. Lol. So it's going to be a baby. Uh, they're expecting this summer, along with House of the Dragon. So we're going to have House of the Dragon versus Rings of Power all over again. again. <laughs> <laughs> and I think I think that Wheel of Time is supposed to come out uh, this year too. So like. Triple. Oh my three. gosh! It Triple is. <laughs> <laughs> Can't wait for Wheel of Time. You, some of your videos on Wheel of Time were awesome. I, I, I didn't because I didn't watch it, but I did watch it. You watch the videos. One where he was just laughing. He was giggling halfway, like more or less all the way through your video. You were just giggling. Who, who was? You was. Oh me? Oh yeah, that one. It so, was so bad. Uh, the guy was kissing one of the other characters or something, and you were going, like, I can't. There was no chemistry. It was like I was waiting for the for him to get naked, and when it finally came, I was just like, "This is terrible! I can't!" Like, ugh. we're finding out a lot about Amber tonight, aren't we? <laughs> 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 yeah. I had to find something. I think it was one of my episode intros. Was that this show? I don't care about any of the characters, anything. So now I have to regress my mentality to like find something about the show that i can look forward to seeing on screen i said so it's going to be this tall drink of asian water and yeah like it was he he's got a good body he's good looking and it's just been so disappointing <laughs> a drink of asian water yes <laughs> my jaw i can't drop my jaw to the floor amber i can't Wendy, Wendy, <laughs> you just hear the pot your daughter's potty mouth. I've had my fill of tall Scottish water, which I guess he would be Irish. No, not Irish. Scottish. What would you? What's a Scottish drink? I don't even know. Whiskey. 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 Yeah. Okay. So I had to find something else. Yeah, that was what I was there for. Pretty much, I was like, okay, this is it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, that's all you can do is just have fun with it at a certain point. I mean, there's 
So the characters like, are too unlikable. It's you know what it is. It's like the, the writing improved in season two. Like I was, I was like, yes, it improved in some ways, but the character writing did not improve at all. It's just, it was shocking. And I know we've had these conversations before, but shocking how it gets beyond the writers' table. Like how the creative ensemble, whatever it is, whether you've got a producer and two writers and a director, whatever your ensemble is how the stuff actually gets put like in front of the camera and gets assembled. You get the lights, you get the, the set, you get the actors and you go, right, if you not do this, this is movie magic. Mm. And then when you see it, you think, how the fuck did that be allowed to leave the creative table? How did that, and I know it's a thing that Liz, me and Liz, you, or as an analogy, we always use the writer's table as like, how did it get there? Why? How? Anyway. Yeah. Anyway, we've been there before. We've been there before. So, but I've got to say, in general, so I know, because I still think we're more positive about free body mm -hmm. problem, Avian Romulus. That's about it. <laughs> well no 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 we also we were talking about dune june so yeah, we've been treated wait when is, the benny jester show is supposed to come out this year isn't it i'm gonna i'm gonna have a, yeah i'll have a go that like september october time okay so it's not this summer because that's just one little that's just one little other i don't really <laughs> not yet i mean give them a you know give them time and then we, we're going to see a series of everything, aren't we? If the Benny Jesuit one works, and that, that could be quality. That mm -hmm. could, and then... Um, there'll, be a, there'll be a Harkonnen series. The be other other one's going to flop down. And <laughs> they are gonna, <laughs> they're going <laughs> to work on them, aren't they? Like, like I said before, we, we, we want to we wanna see the Worms series. We want to see, like, you know, <laughs> what the Worms do under the ground. <laughs> like, with their subtitles, <laughs> like in... <laughs> Like in the blue people avatar and over the whales. <laughs> yeah, subtitles. How are you doing, Dave? Yeah, I'm all right. <laughs> Dave the worm. Yeah, oh Dave my the worm. Goodness. Right, I think worms. <laughs> we end. Starting with strep throat, we've ended with worms. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah, there we go. It, it, it works. It's meant to be. <laughs> There's a balance to the force somehow. Anyway, guys, listen, I think that was great. Um, mm -hmm. I think there was more positive than negative. I think yeah, we definitely. Picked up the stuff we loved more than the nego side of things. And I think we have brought some um, some sexuality that we don't often see in a, a whole cast, thanks to Amber. You're welcome. <laughs> it was something for the ladies. <laughs> Excellent. This algorithm. Something for the ladies. The podcast has got something for the ladies. As if, uh, as if me and Taters weren't enough, we got something else for the ladies. Yeah. Well, no, yeah, there, there's a certain group that goes after Liz, too. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, there is. The alien side of things, I mean, you always appeal to them. But, you know, it's me, and, me and Taters for the earthling, for the earthling female audience, I think, you know, we do all right, Taters, don't we? I mean, it depends how desperate they are, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm sure there are a few back there that are exceptionally desperate, so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. DM me. <laughs> <laughs> On that note, shall we freeze frame, everyone? Mm -hmm.